In this lesson from Launch Code, we're going to delve into many-to-many -many relationships. So far in our exploration of object relational mapping and looking at how objects can be mapped into a relational database, we've talked about um, just single entity um, storage where you can take a single class that doesn't have relationships to other classes and store that in a table. We've also talked about one-to-many relationships where you might have two classes that are related, where one class can have several instances of the other class and how to manage that relationship. Today we're going to take that um, exploration of relationships to the next level and talk about the, the most complex scenario, which is many-to-many -many relationships. So let's start by reviewing one-to-many relationships. So these are the exact same diagrams we saw previously. On the left-hand side, we have um, two cheese objects that have a relationship to a category object. And so they each are part of the same category. And so there are two sides to this relationship. The cheese object will have a category reference. It'll have a category field or property. And then the category will have a list of the cheeses that it owns. And so we say that the category, it's the one side or the owning side of this relationship. A category has many cheeses. Each one category has many cheeses. Now in this situation, the way we've set up our classes, that you cannot have a cheese in multiple categories, okay? So a cheese can only be in one category. That's a one-to-many relationship. When we looked at how we can map that relationship into a relational database, we saw that while we have our objects stored in two different tables, we have a cheeses table and a categories table, that we can link those tables by using a foreign key column on the owned side of the relationship. In other words, there's a foreign key on the many side. There can be many cheeses to one category, so the cheeses table has a foreign key into the category table. And that allowed us to relate these things in a nice way. And so the ORM system was able to reconstitute those relationships when it was pulling data out of the database and handing objects back to our code. All right, so this idea of using a foreign key to uh, manage these relationships in the relational world, we'll, we'll, we'll do something sort of similar when we look at many-to-many -many relationships, but this approach exactly will break down because if you notice, when we look at the foreign key column category ID, um, I can only put one value there, right? If I wanted to have a cheese in multiple categories, there's really nowhere else for me to store that data. Um, and so this, this, this simplistic view of managing relationships with a single column is going to break down. So let's talk about what a many-to-many -many relationship is. Um, so here's a diagram of what might be a many-to-many -many relationship. So suppose we were going to introduce a new class into our system, that of a menu, and we wanted a menu to be able to have multiple items, multiple cheeses, and on the other side, we wanted to allow cheeses to belong to multiple menus. So if you're thinking of a restaurant, you might have different, um, a menu might be different sort of samplers. You might have three or four cheeses per sampler, and you could certainly have multiple samplers, um, and you could certainly have the same cheese in multiple samplers. So that's the kind of the concept that we're dealing with now. So in this scenario, this current picture, we have three cheeses and one menu. And so the menu has reference to three individual cheeses. The way it's pictured now, this, this would uh, in and of itself would just be a one to many relationship. However, we want to allow the scenario that's pictured here where we can have a second menu that might own um, or have a reference to a cheese that is also in another menu. So you notice if you look at the objects on the left-hand side, there are, well, there's at least one object that has two references associated with it, the, the one in the middle with ID3. And on the right-hand side, both of those have multiple references associated with them too. So this is a many-to-many -many because it's possible at least for each class to have many references to the other class. So if we think about how this might work in the relational world, um, we're going to notice that we run up against a complication pretty quickly. So if we were going to look at our uh, relational tables for each of these classes, we would have one for cheeses and we would have one for menu. And of course we would have our primary ID, our primary key column ID along with the other data in there. And we already said that, that storing a single foreign key in the cheese column would not work in this scenario. So the way we get around this and, and the way we actually can keep track of the data associated with many-to-many -many relationships is through what's called a join table. And so this is going to be a third table that we'll introduce to manage this many-to-many -many relationship. And a join table is very simple. It just has two columns. And each of these columns is a foreign key column into its respective table. So in the cheese menu table, we call it cheese menu because it's going to relate the cheese table to the menus table. 
and the first column is the cheese ID column. That's a foreign key column into the cheeses table. So notice that each of those IDs is one of the IDs in our cheeses table. The right-hand column is menu ID, and that's going to be a foreign key column into our menus table. Each ID there is going to correspond to the primary key of one of the rows in the menus table. And so by virtue of having this join table, we can then link many objects of one table to many objects of the other. So the way this works is um, if there is a pair of entries in the join table, um, that constitutes a new reference, a new relationship. So if we look at in particular, look at um, cheese with uh, cheese three, right? So that ID three, it shows up in the join table in the third row, and we see that three has a relationship to menu one. And we see that three has a relationship to menu two as well. This says that uh, the cheese with ID three is in menu one, it's also in menu two. Um, on the other side, we have um, a menu with multiple cheeses. So if you look at the menu ID one, that has a relationship to the cheeses with IDs one, two, and three. So each pair of entries in this join table will um, essentially mimic the idea of a reference in the object-oriented world. And our ORM system will be able to smartly um, build these references back up with the information that's stored in the join table. Now, one thing to mention here in this, this new scenario where, we, where we're using a join table is that there isn't a specific column that functions as a primary key in the join table, right? So we don't have uh, an ID column that is, that is a primary key in this join table. What happens is these two columns together form what's called a composite key. And so the pairing of the values in each column should be unique. So remember that a primary key is a, is a, is a column such that for each row in the table, that column is unique. Here, what we want to be unique is the pair of entries, right? So we should be able to have only one entry of cheese one and menu one, right? Because that's only, you know, a cheese can only be in a menu once. So that is what is unique. So we're going to use, or our ORM system is going to help us use the idea of a composite key. And so these, key, these two columns together will form a composite primary key, while individually they are foreign keys into their respective tables. All right, so in our next lesson, we're going to actually look at how we can implement this behavior in our object-oriented uh, MVC frameworks.